Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? Oh, I am so delighted to hear it. And me? Oh yes, never better. Thank you for asking. And the weather, you ask? Well, there's some sunshine today, but it is cold. We are still in a low pressure area and the wind is swirling in, coming in from the north, bringing some cold weather in. But I'm happy because my solar panels are charging electricity, and so today's flight is free. <laughs> and speaking of today's flight, where are we going to? Well, I got a message from 737 SST. By the way, that's a fellow by the name of John and he's from Leiden in the Netherlands. And he wrote me in to say, how about a flight from Bern LSZB to Salzburg LOWS or the other way around, he said. Both airports are situated in mountainous areas and Salzburg has a nice circle to land on runway 33. Well, I think that's a brilliant idea. The only problem is, when I've checked the weather over the past few days, all I can get is runway 15. That is, when using active sky, which gives me real weather conditions. So today I'm going to do something a little unusual. I'm going to make actually one flight, but two landings. <laughs> yes. Now, how am I going to do that? You ask? Good question. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to set everything up as though we're going to do the regular ordinary flight according to the weather which is going to bring me in on runway 15 at Salzburg. And then after I land, but before I go to the terminal, I'm going to switch over and then we'll do a second landing, only this time with different wind conditions. I'm going to select clear skies from P3D, which gives me a neutral situation. And I parked myself right now. I'm here at runway 33 at Salzburg. So that means that when I take off, I'm going to do a round robin and come right back in onto runway 33. And I'll use the RNP uh, Yankee. Uh, 33 approach. I'll show you that in a minute. But the important thing is, is I'm going to do both landings because John was particularly adamant and interested in a runway landing on 33. So that's what we'll do. So if we cannot get the real live weather to cooperate with us, we'll just make our own. Now that is a Ryanair standard, don't you think? <laughs> I've been following all kinds of flights over the past few days, hoping that the weather will switch around, but it hasn't. So we are doing our own thing. Now, I've got some great weather, um, great airport sceneries here. For Bern uh, LSZB, the airport scenery there is made by FlyLogic Software. And Salzburg, L-O-W-S uh, airport scenery is made by Digital Design. Now, John, when he wrote me, he sent me a flight 
that is available on flight aware and it is smart wings flight 2007 or qs 2007 it's not a commercial flight but i suspect it is a charter flight because there are no commercial flights between bern and salzburg so i put that in and i'm using that for the first flight the the full flight departing from Bern. The second one, of course, I'm not going to use anything. I'm just going to do a round robin and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so if we're set, then let's go into pre-flight and plan the one for runway 15 first and then I'll show you the one for runway 33. Okay, all right. Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking at the historical flight of Smart Wings 2007. And there is the designator that you can see right there, QS2007. Departed from Bern and went to Salzburg. This, of course, was uh, three weeks ago. Having a look at the flight route, here you can see it flying all the way across here. And by the way, all of this is mountainous area. This is where the Alps are. So we should get some good flight views today. And their particular, oh, they were flying at 31,000 feet. I don't know if flight aware, if Simbrief will give us the same, but we will put it in and see what happens. Looking at Windy, and this is the Windy site for Bern, LSZB. And it's saying that right now, nine minutes ago, the wind was 280 degrees at four knots, varying from 240 to 340 degrees. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more. There's some light rain, clouds few at 4,400 feet. Broken at 5,000 feet, temperature 12 degrees, and the Q&H is 1004. So it's not too bad. But here's the critical bit. It is VFR and has been for the past few hours. Now the META, of course, is the Meteorological Aerodrome Report, which shows the weather conditions as it is right now. But the TAF down here, that's the Terminal Aerodrome Report. And this gives conditions for the next uh, until 20 hundred hours, from 1100 to 20 hundred hours. And this is showing wind at 270 degrees at six knots. So not much difference than in the two reports. Here you can see the wind is coming up, coming up pretty much from the south, a little bit to the, from the south, southwest, and coming up through that area. Looking at the runway, well, I'm not sure which particular runway we're going to be facing here. Uh, the only one that is asphalt that we'll be using is the 1432 one. And if the wind is coming from the south, then it's likely we'll be using the 1-4 runway, which would be in this direction. And that means a crosswind, crosswind takeoff. And this, by the way, is a shortish uh, runway. It's only... Uh, 5,676 feet long. So we will try not to mess about in takeoff, eh? <laughs> Going now over to Salzburg. Here we go. Here's Salzburg. And look at all the mountains surrounding Salzburg. Beautiful area, this, by the way, Salzburg. 
The Meta says wind is 140 degrees, varying from 080 to 180 degrees, so it's all over the place. And visibility 10 kilometers or more with the wind at 6 knots, clouds at 4,000 feet, temperature 14 degrees, warmer than in England, and the Q&H is 1000. But VFR. The terminal aerodrome report, and this is quite a bit different from this. This is showing the wind from 140 degrees, and this is showing wind at 300 degrees. So now I am not sure which runway we are actually going to get, but according to Active Sky, the runway in use is 15. And when I checked with the live flights going in and out of Salzburg this morning, they were all using runway 15. So I'm expecting runway 15. And here we go. This is runway 15. And they're all coming down in this direction. And they seem to be turning off right about here, which is the delta intersection before going on to the main ramp here. That's, those are the ones I was watching this morning. Here we are in Simbrief. We are Ryanair. We are 186. And we are departing from LSZB. And we're going to go to L-O-W-S. Oh, we've been given uh, a German Munich as our uh, alternate should things go pear-shaped. We are Ryanair 186. It's, there's our registration information. The cruise profile is already set. Now, it says here the schedule flight time is one hour and 15 minutes and that of course is gate to gate or block to block it's showing a departure on runway 14 and an arrival on 33 so we may get to do the 33 arrival after all we shall have to see when we get closest to which one they're going to give us we are full and of course we do have one ton of champagne and caviar. If we're flying around mountains, we want to make sure everybody is having a good time as we fly down some of those valleys. This is the route that we've been given, so we will see what this looks like. It says the route distance is 249 nautical miles. And this is the route that it's showing. So taking off from here, sweeping over here and just south of Zurich, over the top, north of Innsbruck, over to the Salzburg VOR and then down into Salzburg airport itself. All right, let's see what happens then. We'll go ahead and save the flight and we'll generate the flight plan. And here it is. We've been given a cruising altitude of 228,000 feet, flight level 280. Our block fuel is 5214, airtime is 47 minutes. And it says here, this is the planned optimum flight level for today. Looking down here, here you can see we are Ryanair 186. Here's the flight level and right here is the route that we'll be taking. EDDM is the alternate airport. We will need to know cost index 6 for the programming and also the average wind aloft 
we'll need to put that in as well. Here's our block fuel. This is what we will need to make sure we get loaded on board. Reserves are 2,255. Trip and taxi is 2,303. No tankering recommended. Right here is the entire flight route. If this is what we actually get, then I'll post this below this video so you can follow this for yourself later on. We're going to need to know the descent information, but particularly for flight level 200, the wind speed and direction at 150 and at 10,000 feet right here. Well, we do have some interesting weather patterns here. You can see there's some frontal movements over here. The wind is blowing strongly in this direction. And there are some weather patterns over here as we cross over the Alps and go into Salzburg. Hmm. Well, it'll be interesting weather. Now, looking at the wind aloft, we're going to be at 28,000 feet. So looking here, this is at flight level 300, pretty close to ours. And it shows that we pretty much have tailwinds going all the way into Salzburg, which I like. I like tailwinds. Tailwinds are good. And here's the vertical profile, taking off from Bern, climbing up to the top of climb, little dip here and going then down all the way into Salzburg here. This little dotted wavy line at the top, this is the tropopause. We're going to be well below the tropopause today. But the wind directions are all showing in our favor. Right, let's go into Navigraph charts. Here we are looking at the area. We're going to click on flights, new flights from Simbrief, and there it is. I'm going to click on the charts list for this because I'm going to need to know the airport information and I'm going to need to know the parking stands. It's showing this is the departure from Bern and this is the one that it's showing going up here. So I'm going to pin that also down to the bottom. Spinning over to our destination, open the charts list. Going to need to know the airport information, pin that, and also the parking stands as well. Everything has been coming in on runway 15. So I'm going to have to put in this one. This is the, in fact, let me go ahead and put this in as an overlay. This is the one that all of the aircraft have been using today. I'll pin this just in case this is the one that we actually are going to be using. And the arrival, this is the arrival chart and I'll pin this at the bottom, coming in here and then going up and then swinging down over there. We shall have to see which it's going to be when we get in and contact the tower. So a lot of interesting possibilities today. And here, by the way, is Munich. In case we had to make a change, this is where we'll be going if we have a missed approach. Now, this is the layout and the route for the second flight. 
As you can see here, I've already got the route already set up. Here's Salzburg, here's the airport down here. And then we'll make a standard departure to go out to this fix, which happens to be WS616. We'll then go to this fix point, which is WS507, before going on to this point, which is WS 831. Now this is pretty much then the route, the standard route to come in using the this one. Here we go. Now I'm going to make this go larger so you can see it. So here you can see the WS 831. Oh, by the way, this is RNP Yankee for runway 33. And here's the 831. I'll come in then to the 833. And notice 5,000 feet is the elevations, is the altitudes for these. And then here, WS 834. Coming down to 835. Now at this point, maximum speed is 145 knots. So going to have to watch that as we make the turn around to come into WS 837. Here's the profile that we're going to have to watch. See here, we'll be on 165 degrees until we get to the final approach point, then three degrees all the way down, making an arc to go to 333 degrees for the final and the touchdown here. Decision height is 1,790, which is 379 feet above the runway, because the runway is 1,411 feet high. So that's going to be the route. Simply take off, go on out to here, up to here, and then make a round robin and come in. So I did that. I put it all together. And here is the entire route right there. And that is what I'm going to be putting in the description box so that you can see the second landing details. All right, having a look now at Simbrief, because I wanted to make sure that I had the proper fuel and all the right configurations. So Ryanair 186, departing Lowe's, going to Lowe's, alternate EDDM, which is Munich. Aircraft type is in there. Cruise profile is six. There's the registration. Schedule flight time is 35 minutes. Departure 33, arrival 33. And here's what I put in to make sure that we calculate everything is altitude is 5,000 feet. And here, there is the entire route. And it's analyzed and the total route distance is 44 nautical miles. And looking down, there is the entire round robin route, just like this. So don't forget, if you want to do this, this right here is the route that I worked out and took it directly from Navigraph charts. And this I'll also post in the video below the description box. Ah, uh, there you are, John. Do come on in and take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up and let's get ourselves ready, shall we? We are here in wonderful Bern in Switzerland. The scenery is magnificent. It really is. So this is LSZB, Bern in Switzerland. We're parked just right by the tower and we are at Yankee 4 stand. Yankee 4. Mm. 
There are kamikazes already gathering. I swear, they must know that if 186 is here, they're going to come and try to make a name for themselves. Well, that's all right. We will, we will defeat them no matter. But they are busy. They are going back and forth. By the way, my frame rate is 22, 23 frames per second, and I'm using three 4K monitors. And on my flight two computer, which runs the external screens, I'm using a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3090 graphics card, just the one and it has 24 gigabytes on it and it is running the three screens at full resolution with exquisite detail really great detail and you can see the rain is pouring down so you've got all of that detail and I've been around I checked the tires I kicked the tires and I did wash the windows but you wouldn't know it just to look out there Oh well, c'est la vie as they say, no matter. All right, John, <clears throat> first thing we need to do is we need to turn on the battery and then making sure that we have the 26 volts up here. And we turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. I've already got the fuel loaded on board. I've got um, 5,214, just a little over five metric tons of fuel loaded on. So we do have plenty of fuel for the trip. The engine gas temperature has risen and as soon as it comes down and the generators in the APU are stabilized, this light will come on and let us know so that we can switch to it. And coming close, right, we now have 115 volts showing up here. So we're doing very well. So first thing we need to do is we need to turn on the IRS so that we can get the GPS working. Turn on the galley. You never know. We might just get a cup of tea out of them. Emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt signs. I am turning on the left and the right window heat. We don't want to have any steaming on the glass now do we and I am turning on the probes to get them nice and warm because outside air temperature is 12 degrees but we want to make sure that they're good and warm the forward service hatch is open and the equipment that's the electric stairs they are down and our passengers are beginning to load over here I'm going to turn on the APO. I'm going to turn on the hydraulic pumps next and then turn on the APU bleed and turn on the packs to get the heat running into the cabin. And there it is, there's that rush of air. And then over here I'm putting on the steady light so that people know that we are in here getting ourselves ready to program. Right John, we've got everything set up now. I'm looking over here at my Active Sky weather app. I'll show you what this looks like. Now this is showing the, the top one is showing the conditions at our present location and you can see that at the bottom it's suggesting that runway 14 and 14 right is in use at the bottom 
it is showing runway 15 in use at our destination. So interesting that um, Simbrief gave us 33 for our arrival in Salzburg, but here it's definitely showing 15 as in use. Let me also show you what the airport scenery looks like here. This is really a delightful scenery. Isn't this delightful? Very, very nice detail. And you can certainly see the wind coming down, can't you? Look at all of that, the rain, and it's all blowing about. This scenery is made by FlyLogic Software, and it is really delightful, really delightful. And as I say, I've got 23 frames per second on my 4K monitors. All right, now it's time to go ahead and make the program. Here's the position initialization. We check the air rack, it's current. The program is showing no errors. Bring this in. Our position that we're starting from is LSZB. So LS and the ZB. And we are, of course, starting out at Yankee 4. I'm going to put it in to see if it will come up. So Yankee 4 is not in the database, no matter. And I'm going to go to next page on here to see what the GPS has returned. I'm going to actually use the GPS that we have for our location and has been picked up. So I'm clicking that, it goes into temporary and there it is. So now we have our starting point. Here's the route. So we are LSZB and we're going to go to L. O W S. We are flight number Ryanair 186, so that's R Y R, and we are 186. I go down to next page, and here's where we put in the information for our route. So the first point is Ramok. R-A-M-O-K, -okay. so R-A-M-O-K, -okay. and then we take the Zulu 143, Zulu 143, and then that takes us to Bursu, B-E-R-S-U. Then we take the November 871, November 871, and that will take us to Deges, so D-E-G-E-S. And then we're going to go to Badbe, B-A-D-B-I. And then we take the Lima 725, Lima 725, and that will take us to Unken, U-N-K-E-N, so U-N-K-E-N. And then that's it. Activate, execute. Go to our fix and we'll put in L-O-W-S 
and we're going to need a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle. Now I'm going to go to the descent and to the forecast. Now transition level is set by ATC in Austria, but the transition altitude is 10,000 feet, which we'll put in in just a moment. But right now we need to do the three altitudes of 20,000 feet, 15,000 feet, and 10,000 feet. The Q&H at our destination is 100 and 0. And at 20,000 feet, the wind speed and direction is 283 at 55. So 283 at 55. That's some pretty fast wind there. And at what 15,000 feet, it is 272 at 51. 272 at 51. And at 10,000 feet, it is 249 at 44. So 249 at 44. And execute that. Departing. Now, this is the point that we need to tune in to ATIS to see what the weather is giving us for departures. And that is on 125.12. Bell Airport information, uniform, 1006, Zulu, wind 268 at minor, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, ceiling 5000 broken, temperature 122.5, altimeter 1004, landing and departing, runway 32, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact, you have uniform. Well, according to this, the altimeter is 1004, so I'm going to put that in here. And it's saying that the departure now is on runway 32. So, if that's the case, I'm going to call up the ground and ask for a clearance and see what we get. And we're going to be departing to the east. Burn ground, Ryanair 186, request taxi for east departure with uniform. Ryanair 186, taxi 2 and hold short at runway 32 using taxiway Kilo Echo contact tower on 121.025 when ready. Taxi, hold short runway 32 via taxiway Kilo Echo, Ryanair 186. Well, there's the first change that we're going to have to make. We're not going to be departing on on runway 14 after all but we're going to be departing on runway 32 so we're departing on runway 32 so I'll just put that in and execute that and coming into Salzburg so far it is still showing runway 15 as being the active runway in Salzburg so I'm going to have to put that in the transition of course is SBG up here I'm going to turn on the your damper and there's the flight continuity light just went off if we're departing on runway 32 then the direction will be then 318 degrees so I'm going to change this to 318 for our heading I'll change yours too okay so 318 for our initial departure heading and there we go course heading is changed there 318 our cruising altitude is 28,000 feet, so I'm going to put 28,000 in here. I know that ATC likes to control that, but we're Ryanair and we do our own thing. Okay, up here I'm going to set the pressurization for 28,000 feet. 
our landing altitude the airport elevation is 1411 so that's 1400 so I'll put 1400 in here for our landing altitude right now I'm going to put in weather radar on mine and the data I'm going to put terrain on yours and click on the duration we'll need to have you look out for mountains and I'll look out for weather how does that sound now we go back into the route and let's perform the initialization our reserves are 2255 the trip is 2303 that comes to 4558 or rounding it out to 4.6 so 4.6 the reserves 2.3 cost index is 6 double click that and it makes the calculations our cruise altitude is 28,000 feet so 280 our cruise wind is 285 at 55 so 285 at 55 Transition altitude, as I said earlier, in Austria is 10,000 feet. So I'll put 10,000 feet in there and execute that. And one limit, we're going to do the 12 degrees. We won't do any bumps or derates or anything like that. We will use flaps 10. We'll be using most of the runway, I suspect and this is giving us a center of gravity of 23.6 with a trim wheel of 4.78 single click on these and it gives us the v1 the rotation speed and the liftoff speed of 144 so i'm going to put 144 now in here good all right so we've got that flight director on and uh, flight director on your side so I've got the buttons pushed, everything is looking good, VOR1, VOR2, push those up, and we are set to go. Now we'll bring up the stairs and close the doors, it stopped raining, so we should have a nice departure here, there you can hear the electric stairs coming up. I'm switching to RTO for ready for takeoff and the lights have gone off all right let's fuel is on board check windows all locked seatbelt signs are on check door lights are out check MCP is programmed and checked Uh, Takeoff thrust bugs and everything speeds are checked in there. CDU pre-flight is complete. Rudd air alarm is ch checked. Okay, anti-collision light is now on. So we're ready now to... So we make our engines are started in place and then we will make our turn and go down in that direction to the active runway. Okay. Navi graph charts working now and you can see them here at your lower right and you can see with the red arrow right in the middle right by the control tower that's where we are so if you're set we'll check our seats make sure everything is set all right we are set to start the engines So I'm turning off the air conditioning now. Which engine would you like to start first? Number one here on the left and number two on the right. You'd like to start number one? We can do number one. So I'm going to switch over here to generator one. And now I'm going to turn the engine to number one. 
Here you can see the stop has opened. The N2 is climbing very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel and that will start the engines. There we are. Fuel is now in. We're looking to see that the engine gas temperature is building up and it is. We're looking for the low oil pressure light to go out next and it has. Engine gas temperature is looking very good. We should hear the engines in a moment. There. There's the engines. So now I'm going to be looking for 115 volts up here. There it is. Switch that off and I'm now switching to engine number two to start engine number two. Start valve has opened. There's the N2 winding up. You can see it right here. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel to the right engine. And there it is. Fuel is in. Looking now for the engine gas temperature to start rising. And it is doing so smoothly. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it has. In a moment we should hear the engines pick up for number two and I'm looking now for 115 volts to appear up here for engine number two. There it is. And the lights have gone out. The engines are looking stable and we can now switch to the main engines for electricity and now I'm turning on the packs to get the heat going again I'm turning off the APU bleed turning off the APU I'm now going to turn on the taxi lights and I'm turning on the TCAS because we're now getting ready to make our start I'm going to go to flaps 10 and things are looking good all right, are you are you set? Are you ready? You're bottled in? Okay. Attendance. We are getting ready to move. So make sure that there's no kamikazes coming. And break off. Now I'm going to put more power to the left engine to swing us around to make our turn. So the, I think this one is the Delta coming up. There's not an awful lot of room here, is there? Turn and we'll get our clearance. Burn Tower, Ryanair 186, Lydia, Longway, 3-0. 
3 2 East departure. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff runway 32. Approved. Departure to the east. Cleared for takeoff runway 32, Ryanair 186. Alright, we are cleared to take off. All we need to do is just make our circle around here. All lights are now on and the strobes are on. And make the turn here. And there it is, get ourselves lined up. Okay, final check. Recall, check. Flight controls, check. Flaps, green light, check. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is correct. Speed brake lever down, D10. Ground equipment is clear. Takeoff briefing done. Bleeds are on. Engine start switch is continuous. Cabin is secure. And starting the clock. Everything is good. All right. There we go. And we're rolling. Toga button push. Full power.
were wondering whether or not there would be enough runway for a 737-800 and there was. We managed to lift off before the end of the runway so everything worked out well there. The taxiways were really narrow at Bern though and I'm not sure but I may have definitely, well definitely I would have gone off on some of those turns because they were really really narrow. But we're on our way and now we are above the clouds climbing to 11,000 feet and in a little bit we'll be on our descent and approach into Salzburg. So, if you'd like, go on back into the main cabin, grab some of that champagne and caviar, let them spoil you rotten and then as soon as we're on our descent and approach I may have then more information about the runway that we'll be using and I'll give you a shout and you can help me land the aeroplane in Salzburg, okay? Alright, see you in a little bit. I see you in a little bit.
45 minutes into our flight and right I'm going to see how this is working now let's see we're on course Everything is fine. Everything is looking good. Right, I've just switched over your side to show the descent pattern going in to runway 15. We are descending very nicely. And I'm going to bring the other chart up.
going through 5,800 feet, descending to 400. I'm going to go to 150, which is our course heading at the moment. Until we get to the NDB and then
and there's all these mountains around. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But we're on the glide slope with two whites and two red. We're coming in. 1,000. 1,000. Still on course, we do have a little bit of a crosswind here. We're too wide, too red. Five hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. And descending nicely. Approaching minimums. One hundred. Minimums. Forty. And we are landing. Twenty. Ten. And flaring. Reverse thrust. All right, John, here we are. We're going to do the second uh, approach and landing now into Salzburg. So, let me show you what I've got set up because I'm at pause at the moment, but I am on runway 33 at Salzburg. Let me, let me show you the scenery that I've got. Right, I'm showing you here the scenery from the cockpits at the active runway, which is of course 3-3 at Salzburg and over there you can see the tower and the main terminal building and swinging around you can see smokestack over there lovely detail this of course is by digital design uh, they're, they're the ones who put this together. Now, over here I wanted to show you what I've got set up. I've got the course here is set up for 333 degrees. It's 143 for takeoff, heading 33. 5,000 feet is my altitude setting. I've also got 5,000 feet set up in the pressurization and 1,400 for the landing altitude. Everything is pretty much set. At the moment, I'm running on the APE, APU. I haven't started the engines yet, but I will in a moment. Down here, and I'll show you now the... I'll show you now what's down here. I've already set up the barometric pressure for the landing for minimums. As you can see, it's standard uh, altimeter setting here of 1013. And there is the round robin. So you can see exactly what the route is all the way up going around and coming back down and making a landing on runway 33 over here you can see the traffic the weather is on this screen the traffic ta only is my um, tcas 
and I've got ADF1 set to SI. I'll show you that in a moment. Over here, I've got VOR2 set to SBG, and it says that we're 14 DME miles away. Now on this, on my primary radio, here you can see this is the frequency for ATIS. That's the frequency for the tower. This doesn't matter, this particular one, because I'm not using VOR1, but I am using VOR2. And here you can see I've got 113.8, which is the SGB. Here's the Tika switch is on. 2200 is, of course, VFR for uh, jets, at least in that. And then down here, I've got 410 in the frequency on the ADF. I'm going to get myself so sorted and get myself going. And then I'll join you again as soon as I'm at the Salzburg um, VOR. And then we'll be coming in to make the approach, the R nav approach to runway 33. Okay? All right. Oh, they go. 
we're making our descent and when we get down to Whiskey Sierra 836 max speed at that point is supposed to be 145 no more
also, we're going to have to do a little U-turn here to get back. Oh no, we can go to the end. And then go down the taxiway there. Just that. All right, let's begin the cleanup. Okay, we are off, 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 and off, and lights off. And okay on that. All right, we're cleaned up. Now we'll taxi to the gate. This one coming up, I believe. There's the main apron for the terminal. Stick my hand out to make a turning to the right here. Ha. If only. And we'll go into, let's see. Well, this is Whiskey One. How about we take whiskey one? If we can get rid of all of these kamikazes, go on, get out of it. 
Wow, look at them. All right, here's my chance. Ha. Whiskey one, and there we are. Break on, and shut down. All right, engines are shutting down. Everything is looking good. Chicas is off. Stairs are down. Door is open. Your damper off. Both signs are off. And all lights are off. Cleanup is complete. Right. And battery off. Shutdown is complete. Well, here we are at Whiskey One parking terminal. And we're right next to the tower at Salzburg. And this is a delightful, delightful scenery. I'm going to have to show you this. Look at all those mountains in the background. Look at the detail. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful cloud formations as well. fire engines there and over here there you can see the base of the tower and right there general aviation entrance I think that's what that would be and we are at stand whiskey one and this is by digital design beautiful scenery Well, John, you got two for the price of one. You wanted a landing at 33, which we did. And the weather, when I did the first one, was a landing on runway 15, which I also did. So we've done a first today. And we've done a first. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was to your liking. I hope this is what you expected and that we met your expectations. Thank you for the suggestion, John. That 737 SST on YouTube. So thank you very much indeed. And I'll see everyone once again next week on Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.